Joining us right now, the governor of the great state of Texas, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Good morning, sir. How are you? Chad, I'm doing great. Great to visit with you when the entire nation is uh, watching Comey's testimony. Yeah, I think it's just I think it's just us right now, Governor. Well, there, there, there's two big events. <laughs> there, there's that going on. Uh, I, I am curious uh, what the pulse is for uh, Red Raider Nation today in the aftermath of the resignation of the OU football coach. I don't want to say people were popping champagne bottles around <laughs> here last night, but uh, it's it's very possible. It, it was just amazing. I happened to be uh, with the University of Texas football team in Austin uh, yesterday afternoon, and uh, there may have been some champagne corks going off there. <laughs> I uh, I bet so. Governor, I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, just the other day, you announced a special session that would begin on July 18th. Uh, I, I want to talk about uh, some of these items. Uh, first, of course, you wanted lawmakers to pass uh, the sunset legislation. And, and, and in your press conference, you said because of their inability or refusal to pass a simple law that would prevent the medical profession from shutting down, I'm announcing a special session to complete that unfinished business. It, to me, that's a quote of of disappointment on your end looking at the legislature. Am, am I reading that right? You are reading it correctly. Here's the deal, and that is, uh, for for uh, you know how the way Austin works, but your average listener may not, and that is uh, there are certain pieces of legislation that must be passed every session. If they're not passed, they're going to be dire consequences. And when we talk about sunset legislation, uh, the way that works is we have certain big, important agencies in the state of Texas uh, that have a deadline when they expire uh, and can no longer exist unless the legislature extends them. One of the important ones this session uh, was the Texas Medical Board. This is the medical board that uh, licenses doctors, uh, and it expires at the end of August, so here in just a couple of months. And because the legislature did not pass the sunset legislation for the Texas Medical Board, uh, it means that we may not be able to license doctors. We may not be able to uh, continue with uh, the health care in the state of Texas uh, the way that it's always been. And so it was necessary uh, at a minimum uh, to call back a special session to get that passed so that we would not be shutting down uh, the practice of medicine uh, in the state of Texas. And, and that issue is a minor issue. Uh, it's a routine issue. It could have easily be, been done. Uh, but because of poor calendar management uh, by both the House and the Senate, uh, and, and because it was simply being used for political fodder, uh, it necessitated a special session to be called. Is that something, and I know that uh, in the past, you and, and the Speaker of the House and the Lieutenant Governor, uh, y'all, y'all have had you know breakfast meetings, leadership meetings where you talk to each other. Was there any any time behind the scenes where you were reaching out to the Lieutenant Governor and, and, and to the Speaker of the House and, and maybe even, I don't know, about members of the, the House Freedom Caucus because at one point they were blamed for holding up that sunset legislation. At other times it was the Lieutenant Governor who was blamed for holding up that legislation. Was was there any type of any type of conversation behind the scenes where you were saying guys stop playing political football with this yes uh, the conversations were almost constant for at least uh, the last two maybe three or four weeks of the session for pretty much the entirety of the month of may uh, i was doing shuttle diplomacy between both uh, the house and senate leaders uh, to uh, cut a deal to get this done that involved not just this issue about the sunset uh, legislation for the Texas Medical Board, uh, but about the other issues upon which there was great divide. Uh, one was the privacy issue. One was the property tax uh, rate rollback issue. And so all these three issues were uh, kind of working uh, together. And uh, there, there was a, a constant process where uh, I would have the lieutenant governor in my office, and then I would have uh, conversations with either the speaker or his chief lieutenants uh, trying to find a way uh, to get a deal cut uh, so that all of these issues would be able to be resolved uh, and we wouldn't be required to be spending taxpayer money to go into extra session. Visiting with Governor Greg Abbott, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, just a, a couple of minutes ago, poor calendar management. 
uh, yesterday in an interview, uh, you were quoted answering a question where a, uh, the, the, the host asked, I've got a list of 20, 20 uh, items here during the special session. Do you look at it as Joe Strauss holding all of these back, or do you look at it as Strauss saying, hey, that's, this is, I'm doing my job? You, you said I think it's actually a combo of both, that, that it was a, a problem uh, in the House uh, with, with holding these issues back, but also Joe Strauss viewing it as his job. Do you view, I, I guess what my question is, when you look at the House leadership and the Speaker of the House and his priorities versus what we see in this special session, do you think that he prioritized the issues well, and did he do his job good enough in your mind? Well, he, he prioritized items that were along the lines of what his priorities were. And I laid out a special session on items that I consider to be priorities for the state of Texas. Uh, these are all items that will make the state of Texas even better. Uh, and so what I'm saying is that, okay, if, if you guys uh, are, are not going to take care of business during the regular session, if you're going to use – uh, this must-pass bill uh, about uh, ensuring that the Texas Medical Board is going to continue on as political fodder, uh, that I'm going to make sure that we have a special session that counts, that focuses on issues that I know are very important to our fellow Texans, such as uh, reducing property taxes, uh, such as uh, ad addressing something that's turned out to be a very substantial issue uh, all the way from Dallas, Texas, to the Rio Grande Valley, uh, and that is to crack down on fraud that has taken place in the mail ballot process. Governor, you said that, that, that the Speaker of the House, and I want to get to some of these 20 things here in just a second, but you said the Speaker of the House prioritized his priorities. You pri prioritized the, pri the, the, the issues for the state of Texas. Are you saying that maybe the House Speaker didn't have the priorities of all Texans in mind? I can, in, in, in my conversations and, 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 and also in my perceptions, uh, it seemed like uh, his priorities differed uh, from, for example, these priorities that I have on the special session call. His priorities differed from uh, the deals that we are trying to broker at the end of the session. It's some easy examples, and that is uh, uh, I, I called in my state of the state address that I gave uh, at the very beginning of the session uh, for meaningful property tax reform. Uh, several weeks before the end of the session, uh, I said uh, publicly in the press, uh, there were a couple of items that were must-pass items in order for this session to be concluded successfully. One of those was property tax reform. Another that I articulated both in my state of the state address as well as during the course of the session, uh, and that is to have at least some form uh, of ability, especially for uh, parents of special needs children uh, to have the opportunity uh, to pick a school that is right for them. And none of these uh, had any opportunity of being addressed uh, in the Texas House of Representatives. Um, yeah. now, 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 I'm looking at 20 items here. One that is must pass before we get to everything else, which was the sunset legislation. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, Governor. I watched this past session. How do you expect these lawmakers to get all 20 of these done in 30 days? It's pretty easy because uh, for almost all of them, uh, nothing new needs to be created. Uh, I am resurrecting bills uh, that were already proposed, uh, that were largely debated on. Uh, many of them already passed out of the Senate. Uh, I know uh, in my conversations with the lieutenant governor uh, that these are all items that can be passed out of the Texas Senate. Uh, in short order. It's just a matter of getting them to the House floor, getting a vote on them. Uh, the issue is not really one of timing because these are not difficult issues for them to be able to grapple with because they have already grappled with most of them. Uh, it's just a matter of are they going to stand for them and vote for them? Or are they going to evade them and or not vote on them? The only new items that they really didn't consider uh, during the regular session uh, were things such as uh, my request for uh, a pay uh, increase for teachers. Uh, I'm saying that we need to pay teachers a thousand dollars more per year, and we can do that without uh, spending a penny more of Texas taxpayer money. It's just a matter of reprioritizing 
uh, how we spend money on education, taking more money out of the bureaucracy and spending more on our teachers, the people who are in the classroom educating our kids. But that's a tough sell, isn't it, in, in the House, uh, taking money out of the, the, the bureaucracy of, uh, of, of the education lobby, really? I mean, is, isn't that a tough sell in the House? Well, Chad, it, it shouldn't be because this is just common sense, and that is if we're going to be good stewards in the state of Texas, if our goal really is to educate kids, uh, that means putting money uh, where we get the most bang for our buck. And where we get the most bang for our buck in educating kids is getting the best and brightest teachers in the classroom educating our kids. Uh, and I think most people agree uh, there is a waste of money, at least money is being spent very inefficiently, on the bureaucracy of education. And so it's a matter of being good stewards with Texas taxpayer dollars by reducing the amount spent on administration and spending more in the classroom. And uh, percentage-wise, there's just way too much money spent on the administrative side of education, and more money needs to be spent into the classroom where kids will really learn and benefit from. Governor, I want you to speak uh, to to some of the rural Republicans uh, who they they, – they say that uh, when it comes to this property tax issue, property tax reform, and even to uh, school choice for special needs students, there are some, uh, I would say, moderate, if not liberal, uh, Republicans who will jump out and say this will destroy schools, this will destroy counties, uh, that people will flee the rural areas, and that rural areas will completely shut down, Governor. Uh, I want you to speak to them. What message do you send to those folks? Yeah, the- This is very easy. I want you and your listeners to know uh, that I have talked to rural Texans from East Texas to West Texas. Uh, These are the the smaller population counties, uh, and I've I've talked to the county judges. I've I've talked to the leaders of those counties and asked them uh, what their uh, their perception is or or what their response is uh, to the property tax rate rollback. And to a person, they all say the same thing. Uh, it's no problem for them, uh, and there's a simple reason why, and, and that is the rate rollback on the property taxes will not occur uh, and, unless there is a need to increase property taxes by more than 5%. And for them, uh, their uh, growth in expenditures, uh, their growth in the need for the revenue that would increase property taxes by more than 5% is simply non-existent. I haven't talked to a single county judge, a single county leader in a rural part of the state of Texas who says, this really is going to hinder their ability uh, to pass the budget they need. The same is true uh, as it concerns uh, providing choice for kids, especially special needs kids, uh, for education opportunities for this very simple reason. And that is, uh, uh, when you look at schools uh, in in the rural areas, uh, for one, uh, there's not that many other opportunities for kids to go to other schools, and so there won't be uh, any or very many kids removed from the public school systems uh, in the rural areas of the state of Texas. If, however, uh, there there is uh, a child with special needs, and understand this, uh, when we talk about special needs, there's a, a wide range of those special needs. It could be someone like myself who's in a wheelchair. It could be someone who has dyslexia. It could be someone who has autism. We could go on with a long, long list. And it's difficult uh, for a public school, especially in a rural area, uh, to be able to be prepared for the full gamut uh, of different types of special needs that children have. And it can be uh, a whole lot simpler for both the parent and, frankly, even the school district if the parent is able to find a better school for their certain for their particular child's needs and if they do that we're only talking in the rural area of texas you know one two three or five or ten kids uh who who may be removed from a public school and going to a different location and this is a win-win uh it's it's not going to be difficult for the the public school in fact uh, it may cost less for them to have to be able to accommodate that special need and it's a win for the parent about being able to direct their child to a school that really can address the needs of their child. Governor, real quick, final question that I have for you. If lawmakers do not pass a property tax uh, reform bill and they do not pass a bathroom bill, are you prepared for another special session? Well, here's the deal, Chad, and that is, I set this special session up uh, in a format that gives lawmakers every opportunity to get this done. Uh, I declared it six weeks before the special session begins. 
And so they have six weeks to work on this. Uh, but as I pointed out, the work is, is not long and hard because most of these are issues they are very familiar with. Uh, and then after the special session begins, they have 30 days to pass this. So they need to be putting the work in right now uh, for the next five and a half weeks uh, to come to Austin prepared to vote on these matters. They need to take a vote. Uh, we saw what happens at the end of a session, uh, and that is they can vote out hundreds of bills a day. Uh, all we need for them to do is to vote out one bill a day. We don't need them to waste time by coming in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and then adjourning at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. They need to come to Austin with their work hat on, uh, go to work at uh, 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, work all day, and pass this out. Chad, they got plenty of time to get this done. If they don't get it done, it's because uh, they're, they're lazy. It's because they have the lack of will, uh, the lack of desire to get this done. And the taxpayers of the state of Texas are not going to tolerate it. Governor, as always, I appreciate your time, and I hope we'll visit again during the special session. I look forward to it. Take care, Chad. Thank you, Governor. That's Reckham. Governor That's Governor Greg Abbott. Reckham. Thank you, sir.